Recent friend, newly acquired friend, cool guy, uh, Brian Barletta, he helps companies at their formative stages build up and effectively execute on their solutions in mobile-rich media, digital podcast attribution, and podcast monetization and data infrastructure. Actually, we could have a gigantic conversation about that, Brian, but in a nutshell, how does somebody, I get a lot of people come to me and say, Brian, how do I... How do I earn money from my podcast? You know, so how do you how do you make money from a podcast? Yeah, I, I think that for podcasts, you really have to figure out what scale and what you want to do. I think that if it's just you going at it alone, it's not bad to just find a sponsor and then bake that into the ad, meaning or bake it into the episode, meaning right. that you just talk about it, right? You find the sponsor and you say, we're going to talk about this product and you make it truly genuine. And then the high end of it is you can do some really cool ad tech things depending on the hosting platform you use mm -hmm. where you can sell a little bit of your inventory or mm -hmm. you can even kind of shop it out to announcer red ads sure. and have somebody else sell it for you. So the sky's come, kind of the limit. It really depends on if you want to be a creator and a salesperson right. or just a creator and someone else sells it for you. If somebody has questions about this, do you mind if we point them at your LinkedIn profile? Are you okay with that? That would be great. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'm curious here, um, before the cameras were turned on, we have had previous conversations here. I'm curious, how has this, uh, how has this sort of crazy moment um, impacted you? And specifically, how has remote work or work from home impacted you? Yeah, so I've been remote for about five years now, and it was very funny. In the first three months, everybody was just like, oh, you must be so used to it. And in general, I, you know, I am. I have my, my office set up. It's very comfortable for me. But the truth is, is that this is way different than just remote work. This is remote isolation, right? We're in this situation where I used to go for lunch or a coffee break or uh, hang out with my kids somewhere public after work to try and break it up so that I could exit my home office, mm -hmm. decompress, and then come back to my home living space. Mm -hmm. And so while the work aspect of it has been really great, it's easy to feel more like I'm sleeping at work than I'm <laughs> working from home uh, exactly. because it just never ends. I can just pop into that office at any time or it just leaks out. Um, so it's, it's been generally really good. And I think that we're going to see a lot of growth towards it. But I think the mm -hmm. truth is, is that everybody really needs to put their needs first and your company can only really go so far in helping you. You got to, you got to vocalize what you need. Another thing I like to talk to you about is, is this whole, because I think I'm faced with it and challenged with it a lot too, is, is this whole uh, idea or concept of personal reinvention, reinventing yourself, you know, reinventing uh, your brand or, or how you portray yourself to the world or um, to the internet or whatever, the universe. What are your kind of high level thoughts on reinvention? Yes. Uh, my entire career, I've been really focused on being like a product manager or sales engineer. So a lot of the services and stuff I do were done inside of a company, right? An engineer had a really cool product and they needed to break it down to the salespeople. Product marketing only gets you so far. The salespeople need to make sure they're selling something that's real. Mm -hmm. And I would come in and break it down and make it accessible and help them sell it. Um, I always kind of feared that that was a role that if the salespeople got smarter, I would lose my job. And I always wondered what else I could do with it. And so in August, I left the company I was at, Megaphone, a, a major podcast hosting platform. And I just tried to reinvent myself, like you said. And my first step was I was just going to write. I'm not a creative person in any means. I think that my writing is subpar, it, but I get a lot of content across. I get a lot of information. And I have all these thoughts in my head that I want to share and connect the dots for people. Mm -hmm. And so I just started writing. And what's cool is I thought that that would be a vessel to land me my next job, mm -hmm. figure out where I want to go next and just get some attention. Mm -hmm. But now we're three months later and it is my full-time job and I'm, I'm dedicated to it for the next two years. And I found that just by being vocal and talking about things that interest me in the space with other people, you find out more holes and you realize just how valuable your opinion and experience can be because not everybody's projecting what they need. So mm -hmm. if you go out there and ask them how you can help, you can find places that you can kind of be a new version of you. And you have these great conversations. I'm, I'm sure you and I have had similar conversations with people or potential clients where um, 
and it's like magic happens in your head. Well, they'll they're, they'll start a sentence and like you'll finish it. You know what I mean? Or they'll start a question and you'll be like, totally know what you're talking about. You know, and that's pretty cool stuff to connect like that. Hey, yeah. Uh, just one final point here. I we don't have a lot of time here. Um, the the question I ask everybody on this program is is um, you know, Brian, what lessons have we learned uh, during this moment of high flux, whether it's COVID nineteen or crazy economic situations or, or whatever, social unrest. What lessons have we learned or are we learning right now that you know, we must not forget? I think that you need to realize that you have to put yourself first and nobody else is gonna do it. I don't mean that in like a selfish way and like not caring about like your partners or your children or anything like that. But I think in the work and career environment, I think it's, pers- it's really valuable to to remember that, you know, you're dispensable sometimes. And that doesn't mean that you lack value. It doesn't mean that you're not killing it at what you do. It means that that business viewed you as a resource Mm -hmm. instead of a person. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's really important where we are now where, you know, not, you don't even need a cool mic like this. You can get a headset, you can get your AirPods, just start talking, start having conversations, reach out to people and make connections. Because the truth is, is that you have to put yourself first and you should not feel bad about leaving a company because they will leave you without feeling bad about it too that's great to hear thank that's refreshing perspective i appreciate it brian uh i look forward to talking to you again real soon yeah thanks for having me